Hey folks, Sylvius here. Um, so this is a <laughs> little confusing video for me to do here. Um, I'm doing a playthrough for a game called Exile 3 Ruined World. It's by Spiderweb Software, uh, developed by um, Jeff Vogel, I believe his name is. It's an old RPG game. I think it was originally for like the like Mac. Um, it came out in like 1997, I think it is. <clears throat> so here it is on my desktop here. Do do. I always tried to stab them with a little cursor. Stabbed. All right, so we're gonna stay here for a second so I can finish my explanations. So yeah, this is Exile Three. Um, for those of you who are just watching these for the first time, uh, I kind of mentioned it. For other people though, you'll know that I have done a Let's Play for Exile Three before, and then after like twenty some episodes, I accidentally screwed it up and uh, deleted my file. So <laughs> it wasn't entirely my fault. Trust me. So here we are, though, with a whole new thing, so we're uh, gonna skip that, and we're just gonna do start new game. Uh, I'm also gonna skip this. It's all good. I just wanna get to the, the bulk of things, so... Um, I'm gonna delete everybody. Whoops, that was not what I meant to push right there. I wanted to delete everybody first. Uh, <laughs> okay, there you go. Delete. Delete. I missed one. Delete. And delete. So, you have a party of six people here. Um, and you've got a various amount of weapons and stuff like that. You've got uh, ranged weapons, thrown missile weapons, which are like javelins, throwing knives, ninja stars. Uh, I'm also pretty sure, but not 100% sure, that crossbows fall underneath the, uh, the thrown weapon category. We have blunt weapons, we have edged weapons, and we have pull arms. Um, pole arms are, by definition, all two-handed weapons, whereas there's great swords, which are two-handed swords, and then there's, like, short swords and so on, which are one-handed swords. We've got shields, we've got, um, armor, we've got helmets, we've got armor, like, gauntlets, we've got boots also, um, and we've got pants, although they are, don't provide armor values. And we also have what's called um, mage spells and priest spells. Mage spells are your typical arcane fireballs and stuff like that. <clears throat> no lightning bolts, as far as I think, in this game. We've got ice bolts, but no lightning bolts. And priest spells are your buff, healing, and curative spells and stuff like that. So like I said, we got a team of six here. <clears throat> um, I'm probably going to do... I'm going to kind of do it in my like standard, typical way. <coughs> I do usually three melee warriors, and then three mages, and usually one of my melee warriors can also use a bow, and one of them can also use thrown weapons, and then the other one is like a pure melee dude. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to change it up a little bit, because usually my mages also have some like limited comment potential. I'm going to make my mages lean a little bit more on direct damage, except my uh, cleric is going to be able to do some damage too. So, <clears throat> we're going to start off, and here you get your species, your advantages, and your disadvantages. Alright, so, got a cough coming, hold on. <coughs> your species, humans. Humans are the default species in Exile 3. Humans have skins of a variety of hues and are soft, generally fragile, and incredibly resourceful. Nephilim. Nephilim are a race of feline humanoids. Once common on the surface world, they have been hunted to near extinction, although some now remain in exile. Nephilim characters start with better decks and are much better at using missile weapons. Slith Zerakai. The Slith Zerakai Sliths, for short, are a race of lizard men, both strong and smart. Once unknown on the surface world, they are starting to appear there. Slith characters get the bonus to strength and intelligence and are better at using pull weapons. <clears throat> You'll note that all these things have uh, percentages next to them, and these have negative percentages. The way this works is, like, as a human with no advantages or disadvantages, I need 100% of the normal amount of experience points to level up. So if at the first level it is 100 experience points, for instance, um, I would need 100 experience points. If I'm a Nephilim with the 12%, I would need 112% of whatever is normal. So at level 1, that would be 112%. If let's say level two is two hundred, it would be two hundred and fourteen or twenty-four percent. I don't know where I got fourteen from. So on. So are twenty percent, and then we've got all these various um, things here too. I like to just go all out with things that I think are useful. So my first character is going to be a human. Now, <clears throat> you can dual wield and you can use sword and shields also. 
And then you can also use two-handed weapons. <coughs> um, I like to do, since we've got three main, like, primary types of melee weapons, I like to do it um, so that I use two of each. But I also like to get a good mix of dual-wielding, two-handers, and sword and shields. So, I've got two people who are going to be Slitzer guys and who are going to use pole arms. There's no reason to make anybody use a pole arm unless they're going to be a Slitzer guy because the Slitzer guy get bonuses in that. One of them is going to be a, a magic caster of, for, of sorts, and one of them is going to be a melee dude. But we're not going to get to that. So ignore those two, and ignore our pole arms. That leaves me with two humans and two Nephilim I want to use. <clears throat> Nephilim are a race of female, and they get a better dex and are much better at using missile weapons. I'm hoping that that applies to archery, but I don't think it does. Maybe I should only do one Nephilim. And he'll be my, um, like, crossbowman. So we'll go with three humans, one Nephilim, and two Slazerkai. That sounds good. Alright, that's what we're gonna do. So Nephilim dude, uh, because I just... F dex increases your to hit chance, um, and higher dex will help with dual wielding penalties, so my Nephilim dude is gonna be my dual wielder. wielder. <clears throat> and because I find the idea of dual wielding uh, blunt weapons to be horrible, my Nephilim dude is gonna be using edge weapons. <clears throat> Swords, if you will. Although axes, I think, are in there, too. Um, I think... My priest is going to use... Um, good question. Good question. My priest is going to use a... Um, Oh, I'm torn. All right, I've got three people left. One of them's, or if we, all right, we skip the two pole arm dudes. <laughs> the Nephilim's dual wielding um, <clears throat> edged weapons. That gives me one primary fighter character, and then my priest and my like hybrid character. My hybrid character, just because he's hybrid, is she, is going to use a shield. My priest is going to use a two-hander, and then my main dude is going to use what? Sword and shield, dual wielding, or a two-hander? He's not going to use a two-hander, because I've already got two Slither guys using pole arms. I'm trying, I'm trying to keep everything balanced. I've got two Slither guys using pole arms, which are two-handers, and I've got my priest who's going to use a two-hander also. So my main fighter dude is going to use... Let's, we're going to have him dual wield. He's going to dual wield also. Or not. I'm torn. Hold on. <laughs> I'm really torn right now. Hold on a second. I'm actually going to pause and think this out. Just give me a second. Okay, yeah, sorry. That, like, that just really tore me up there. <laughs> I struggled. Um, so the situation here is my primary fighter is going to be a human warrior who uses an edged weapon and a shield. My next one is going to be the Nephilim, uh, and he, that first guy also, I forgot to mention this, is going to be my, uh, my archer. Um, my next one is going to be a De Nephilim who's dual-wielding swords and using uh, thrown missile weapons. We've got a Slith warrior with a polearm. We've got a primary mage who's going to have a polearm, but he's going to have very limited like combat potential. And now i got the hiccups. My next person is going to be a hybrid of uh, mage and priest spells. Um, he's going to be a human, and he's going to focus on blunt weapons and also use a shield to be defensive. And then my next one is going to be a priest. <clears throat> Let me actually switch those two. Yeah, I'm going to switch those two. My hybrid's going to be a two-handed blunt weapon dude, and then my priest is going to be a blunt uh, shield dude, because I think I'll have a little bit more um, leeway to work things there. So my first character, though, is a human. So we got Tuftus. Makes you more resistant to damage. Blows of all sorts have less of an effect on you. Sounds great. Magically apt. The possessor of this advantage will find that his or her spells will function better. This helps both priest and mage spells. This character is a uh, fighter. That's not necessary. Ambidextrous. Oh, let me turn it off. Um, warriors will be able to use one weapon in each hand without any penalties. <coughs> <coughs> Normally using two weapons makes both of them less likely to hit. Not what I want on a guy with a shield. Nimble fingers improves one chance of picking locks and disarming traps. No, I don't want that. Cave lore. When underground, knowledge of cave lore helps one hunt and forge for food and deal better with special circumstances. Um, one of the aspects of cave lore is you don't get poisoned when you're walking through swamps. 
all of my people are going to have cave lore. Woodsman. When roaming the surface of the world, a woodsman is able to hunt and bring down food, find useful herbs, and deal with circumstances involving nature's adversary. That prevents you get po from getting poisoned when you go through swamps on the surface. And I'll be taking that. Someone with good constitution will find that poison disease have a reduced, although not eliminated, effect. We're going to be taking that. Highly alert. Uh, people have edginess that helps them resist magical sleep. In addition, having someone in your group who's highly alert may keep you from being surprised. We're putting that on our people. Exceptional strength. An exceptionally strong character will be able to carry much more stuff, and in addition will do a small amount more damage in combat. And that's going on my people also. Recuperation. A very few adventurers have magical blood running through their veins, causing them to heal damage in their bodies at an amazing rate. We'll be taking that. And then we have disadvantages. A sluggish character just can't move that quickly, even when circumstances seem to demand it. He gets fewer action points in combat. Nope. Magically inept. Characters, for some reason, resist the effects of magical items and are unable to use them. Potions and scrolls won't work for them, although worn items such as rings will have a small effect. Absolutely not. Frail. Frail characters are cursed at birth with a weak constitution. Poison and disease will have a greater effect on such characters. Nope. Chronic disease is the worst disadvantage a character may possess. Such characters have slow, lingering, and curable physical ailments, causing them to occasionally suffer the effects of a mild disease. Nope. And bad back. Uh, cannot bear to haul too much weight. Such a person cannot carry as much as he might have been able to otherwise. So, nope. So, I'm having 164% more EXP for this character. <laughs> now, as I said, this is a um, shield and sword dude. We've got multiple things here. HP and spell points. You probably want to cut a couple of points in health just at the beginning because you don't want to get, like, blasted and killed, like, in one shot. However, health does increase when you level up. So it will eventually go up, and then there is also a cap for that. So keep that in mind. Spell points, unlike health, do not increase when you level up. Spell points, though, are only used for casting spells, which this character does not do. So we've got strength. Right-click for description. Ah. Measures how much brute strength the character possesses. High strength increases damage done in combat, improves odds of kicking down doors, and has other more subtle effects. When below 4, the health of the character gains at each level will sharply reduce. Also, more strength enables you to carry more stuff. So we want to have at least 4. Also, keep in mind, there's these numbers over here. And we also have my skill points down here. The first number is how many skill points an increase costs. So... And it doesn't say it, but, you know, one point here is increasing health by one. I think that's the only one that does that, though. So spell points are one, and they're taking one uh, spell point. If you go down here, strength, for instance, has a three, so one uh, click increases it by three. The second number is how much gold it would cost to have a trainer uh, level you up or train your skill up when you've leveled up. Things like luck, for instance, have zero cost. Dex. Measures how nimble the character is. High dex gives a better chance of hitting in combat, especially with missile weapons, and makes the character harder to hit. High dex also makes picking locks and disarming traps easier. Before a character does any fighting or fighters, any missiles, this skill should be at at least three. Whoops, not intelligence. I was clicking the wrong spots. Measures mental strength and dex. High intelligence also makes your spells more effective, sometimes very much so. Intelligence below four makes your spells work poorly. Uh, if your character is going to cast spells, make the skill at least a four, if not ignore it. There you go. Makes you better at using dagger, swords, axes. Yeah, I mean, kind of self-explanatory. This character is using swords. <clears throat> Makes you better at using darts, javelins, and throwing axes. Thrown missiles are common, and many have magical are magical. Also, the skill is cheap. However, thrown weapons cannot be poisoned. Um, archery. Makes you better at using bow and arrows. Bows are expensive, and so is the skill. However, poison arrows are extremely powerful. All right, this character is using archery. Defense. This skill has three effects. It determines how well a character does at parrying, decreases the penalty in combat from bulky armor, and occasionally decreases the damage taken from enemy weapons. Buy a few levels for anybody in heavy armor. And we over here, we have mage spells and priest spells. You can see that they have a huge cost associated with them. Um, mage lore helps you read uh, magic books. You will occasionally need to decipher strange magical readings. This skill determines how good you are at this. If your skill is high enough, you may gain a spell or valuable piece of information. Spread this around. Don't buy more than 25 points total over the whole game. <clears throat> Alchemy um, 
You will eventually gain the ability to make magic potions to make a given potion. However, your alchemy skill must be above a certain level. The higher it is above this level, the better the chance of succeeding. Um, I don't usually bother with alchemy, so I'm not going to. Um, item lore. Having the item lore gives you a chance of having the items you, uh, from slain monsters be identified when you find them. The more of the skill that is present, the higher the chance of this happening. Expensive, but very useful. Knowing what items are when trapped deep in a dungeon can save your life. <coughs> you can always cast the identify spell, if you can cast it, um, or you can just take them to a person that will do that for you at cost. Item lore is useful, but it costs four uh, points, and I have way more important things I need to deal with right now. Um, disarming traps and lockpicking are pretty self-explanatory. Assassination. Sometimes when a character attacks a much weaker monster, the blow will do a good deal of extra damage. The more the skill you have, the better the chance of this happening and the stronger the monster. Um, yeah, it's way better when you're a higher level, so don't take it now. Poison is how effective your character is at using poison. Uh, I don't usually do it too often. And luck. The skill is expensive, but can be a bargain at a price the cost. It effects are uh, pervasive, subtle, and powerful, and sometimes irreplaceable. Although it costs no gold, hold off on buying this until your level is high. Luck can help a lot, but at lower levels, other things help more. Sums it up pretty well. So we're going to stick with archery, that, and that. I'm going to pop these up to five, and we're going to put the rest in the health. You don't have enough skill points. Look at that. All right. And keep. Now you get to pick an image for your dude. Technically, my dude's an archer, so this one is probably the best bet, but uh, I kind of want to use something else. Also, I'm going to name this character Sylvia, so this is going to be, in my mind, me. Um, we do have a person here that's um, wielding a sword and a shield, which kind of fits. I guess I should go with that one. Yeah, we'll go with that one. I guess I could be also an axe wielder and use the sword. And Yeah, we'll, be, we'll use that one. Even though I probably won't actually use an axe the whole time. Sylvius. All right, next character. This is going to be my uh, Nephilim uh, dual wielder. We want toughness. We want ambidextrous. We want nimble fingers because this one's also going to be picking locks. We want cave lore. We want woodsman. We want good constitution, highly alert, exceptional strength, and recuperation. And this dude is going to have 203% EXP. <laughs> All right, we want a little bit more dex on this guy. We still want the strength up to four, though. Um, edged weapons for this guy. We still want a little bit defense because he is going to be wearing uh, armor and stuff like that. But not as much and it won't affect his shield as much. We want thrown missiles up and he's also going to be our disarmer. Now disarming is more important than lockpicking because there's a spell that uh, unlocks doors. There's no spell for disarming traps. Um, so keep that in mind. And all this, like, mage lore stuff, if I get to it, it'll be later on. Uh, let's put that other point into edge weapons. Another one in defense. Maybe go one in strength and one in throne missiles. <clears throat> and this is a Nephilim archer, so we could go with uh, that one, or we could go with one of the other ones. Uh, I'm looking at this one because it kind of looks like he might be dual wielding. I really can't tell, to be honest, but let's go with that one. All right, what are we going to name this one? Um, good question. What are we going to name this one? I think in uh, my last playthrough, I named this one Kitty Cat. Kitty or something like that. Uh, we're going to call him Meow. Bam. All right. Next one. This is my Slizerkai Warrior. Toughness. We don't need Ambidextrous. We don't need Nimble Fingers. We need Cave Lore. We need Woodsman. We need Good Constitution, Highly Alert, Exceptional Strength, and Recuperation. All right. So you won't see the bonuses these guys get, by the way, to strength and uh, pull weapons initially, but keep in mind that they're there. So I'm going to put that into there. Um, pull weapons pretty heavily. And uh, some ranks in defense. And we're going to give this guy my uh, my couple of ranks of Mage Lord because he doesn't need to waste points on throne missiles or archery, and he doesn't need to waste points on to like, disarming traps. So we're going to give him the uh, those. We're going to also raise his oops, his HP up. He's going to be the one that starts with the most HP. And uh, we're going to up his strength again. There we go. Oh, by the way, the little thing in the background keeps going every time I click on something. Uh, we're going to have him be the uh, thin-looking lizard holding a spear. Uh, what do we name this guy? I think in my last playthrough I named him Lizzie. Um... 
Straha. That I will explain later on. <clears throat> Alright, so now we're on to our spellcasters. This one will also be a Slazerkai, though. Toughness, magically apt. We don't need nimble fingers. We need Kavor. We need Woodsman. We need good constitution. We need highly alert. We probably don't need exceptional strength, but we're going to give him recuperation. <clears throat> now, this one's going to be my um, pure damage dealing mage. So, we're going to give him uh, four ranks of mage spells. Um, the You have to buy your spells later on, um, but the important one is uh, Fireball at level three. Having a certain level, the skill enables you to cast mage spells up to that level. Start with at least one character with level 3 in this. Yeah, you want Fireball. Because Fireball is your standard AoE stuff. Um, we're going to go Strength to the 4 so that he doesn't take the uh, the penalty. We're going to give him Intelligence there, and we are going to give him like 2 points in pull weapons. We're going to raise his HP to that, and then we're going to... Ugh. That is moderately annoying. Alright, and that gives me, what, one point left? Health, I guess? Yeah, we'll put it in health. Alright, so that gives him enough uh, spell points to lob two fireballs. And we are going to go with the uh, standard one there. Now, what should this one be? I'm trying to think of any other, uh, like, things I can... Funny things I can name a lizard. Um, Komodo. I don't know if I spelled that wrong or right, but we'll just go with it. Um, this is my hybrid person, who's going to be a human, so he is tough, he is cave lore, he is woodsman, good constitution, highly alert, exceptional strength on this one, and we want um, recuperation. That, that, to be honest, does freak me out every time it happens, though. Um, we do want to give him enough for, like, that's one fireball and I think one heal spell, so we're going to go with that three, and I want to get him three in Priest also. Um, this guy's not using the shield. This guy's using the uh, the blunt, the two-hander. Alright, hold up. <laughs> the intelligence needs to be up higher. Let's, let's drop a point from Priest spells. Maybe drop a point from Mage spells, too. Alright, he's just not casting fireballs at the beginning of his life, I guess, is where we're at. Um, wow, that's really annoying. What if I take, like, one HP away? Oh, I gotta take, alright. There we go, we got him fireballs. Good enough. This character's gonna suck for a while, it looks like. Now, let's see, does any of these people look like they use, like, a melee weapon and magic? It's kind of hard to tell, because the images are really tiny. You know what? He's gonna be a ninja. Because <laughs> that makes no sense. Uh, or maybe we could make it the... I think that's a woman there. Um, yeah, it'll be a... We'll try to not just have a... I don't want my whole team to be like a sausage party, so we don't want that. Um, <clears throat> this is a jack-of-all-trades type person. I think last game I called this person Jack. We'll name this one Jill. Be a Jill of all trades. And then this one is also a human, and this is our pure priest person. So we are tough, we are magically apt, we are cave luring it up, we are woodsmen, we are good constitution, we are highly alert, exceptional strength, we don't need actually. Eh, we'll keep the exceptional strength on, whatever. And we want priest spells three, we want like that, let's get it up to at least nine I think is what I want. Um, and this person's also using a shield, so we do want a little points in the defense, uh, bashing weapons, uh, strength of at least four, and intelligence of at least four. Um, bash weapons more? Or more, maybe more HP? Or more spell points? Let's go with spell points and then intelligence. That sounds good. Um, and who looks like a potentially... Yeah, we'll go with another woman. Uh, what do we call this one? I wish I had, uh, before I started this video, put a little bit of effort into the names. Um, 
What are we going to name this one? Ah, uh, this is really, really killing me. Let's go with, uh... <laughs> so it's a healer. Let's go with, um... Churchy. I don't even know. Nah, that sounds... I don't like it. Alright, I'm actually going to pause while I think of a name. You gotta give me a second. You gotta give me a second. Okay, so... I hop on Google. I determined that I can fit 17 letters into this. Or characters, if you will. So I hop onto Google. I Google 17 uh, letter words. There's a lot of them. Um, all of them are very technical sounding, so I had to go like search through just tons of words that made no sense to me until I found one that I liked, and eventually then check the definition to make sure it wasn't something stupid. So eventually, I came up with Cardio Respiratory, <laughs> who, uh, as a person whose job is to keep my people alive, I feel like that's a fitting name. So we've got Silvius, the human warrior with a um, sword and shield, or an axe and shield in this case. We've got Meow, a dual wielding edged, a dual sword wielding uh, person that also throws daggers. Straha. I'm actually gonna change his name. He's gonna be a uh, Avatar, Avatar now, or Avatar. Yeah, there we go, Avatar. Um, we've got Avatar, which is my pole arm wielding warrior. We've got Komodo from Komodo Dragon. Because dragons are magical things, and that'll help me keep track of the fact that he's my uh, primary spellcaster. We've got Jill from uh, Jack and Jill from Jack of All Trades, and they've got Cardio Respiratory, my my healer. <laughs> so we're gonna roll with that. I just want to double check and make sure I didn't like screw anybody up. So Jill is like, yeah. I want to make sure like I didn't put like pull weapons into the wrong person or something. But we look. All right. Welcome to Exile 3 Ruin World. These windows will pop up occasionally to explain what is going on. If they annoy you, they can be turned off. Good. Uh, with that, though, I'm going to end my first video. So that was making characters uh, kind of an explanation to things. So that video probably could have skipped, and I probably could have said that at the beginning. But hey, I didn't. You guys just wasted a bunch of your time. Sorry. No, I, I do apologize. Oh, I also like to point out, too, that just off to the side of the screen around where my cursor just went, if it's actually visible, and I don't know that it is, um, we've got, like, my little overlay on the side, my channel, my Exile playlists. Uh, it'll actually be a second, a new Exile playlist, by the way. So I'll, in my next video, I'll make that into, like, Exile second playlist. Uh, previous video thing, so if you want to see any of my other videos, a nice fancy subscribe button. And then we also have my fun fact of the day, because I had space over there. My fun fact today is a liger is an artificial cross between a male lion and a female tiger. Don't you learn something new every day? All right, people. That's it for me. Uh, like, favorite, comment, subscribe. Check me out on Patreon, Twitter, Facebook, and I will see you folks later.